Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do another super fun, highly requested woods video. Y'all love when I make the woods projects. But if you're new here and you haven't yet already, subscribe down below and hit that bell next to the subscribe button. YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video. And you can find all of the paint and products I'm using over on my website, upcycledbybree.com. I'll be sure to leave that all down in the box below. Let's go get started. So something pretty exciting happened. Chloe Love Rug reached out to me and asked if they could send me one of their faux fur area rugs to try out and let y'all know what I think. I do have a 20% off coupon code. The one I'm showing you today is only $10.99 and all of those links and codes will be down in the description box below. I haven't opened it yet, so we are going to give it a shot here together. I just saw a note on here, let's read it. Since this rug comes with a vacuum packing bag, it's normal for it to have creases and for its fibers to not appear fluffy. Please lay it flat for two to three days and wait um, patiently for its recovery. We are sorry for any inconvenience. I was gonna try to be nice and wait for y'all. We'll see what happens. This video won't be up until tomorrow evening, so maybe we'll put it in the sun and see if that helps fluff it out like pillows. Now, I was thinking to myself, where am I going to put a fluffy faux fur rug? I think a uh, shabby chic, this would be a great look. This would also fit awesome into farmhouse. I don't know if I'm gonna have a spot for it, but if I don't... I'm going to use it for my fall staging and it's going to be a gorgeous. <laughs> layers. All right, it's starting to expand. And here we have it. Look, it's even like faux animal shape. Oh, it's so soft. And a couple creases in it, y'all, but it's already fluffy. This would be so cute in a little girl's room. A little boy's room. Adventure, wonder. I like it, I like it. It's really pretty. This is in the color white. Chloe Love. Thank y'all, I really love this. We're going to do some really fun staging with it today. Again, if you want 20% off your own Chloe Love faux fur area rug, I will have that code and the link all down in the description box below. Starting this first project off down in the garage and my very official work shoes, <laughs> just kidding. I want to grab the posts off both sides of this headboard that I found by the side of the road and now I'm taking apart to get a hold of those little spindles. This one came apart fairly easy. I was able to knock it apart with a mallet. Sometimes I do have to get out a jigsaw to get them apart, but not this time. I used a little scraper here to pry underneath of the metal pieces that were on the bottom of the posts. And now I am taking my drill and screwing down a pilot hole so I can attach a base. These metal bases came off of a pair of lamps that were old, outdated. I never was able to update or sell them, so I took them apart and salvaged them for their metal. I placed down a metal washer and now I'm using a wood screw and screwing this base into my post. Back upstairs to the office, I've got my DOS air dry clay and I'm going to fill in these holes and slats from the bed posts. Now, time to head over to my stash closet here with my supplies. This is getting organized in an upcoming video soon, no worries. But I know exactly what's in here. I'm reaching in for some of these wooden finials that had came off of another piece of furniture. And two matching pieces, bingo. This is a bucket full of random hooks. Look how pretty this old rusty one is, it's my favorite. I've been saving it for something special, but today I'm just gonna use some little basic hooks for the wreath hangers. Again, making a pilot hole in the top of this post, which will make the finial easier to screw in. Oh, 
Once the air dry clay was all dry, I'm using a 220 grit sandpaper and just sanding it smooth. Not worried about making it too perfect, I do want these posts to look like they have a little bit of age to them. Back down to the garage, I have got Rust-Oleum Hammered Spray Paint. This is a bronze color. I'm going to use it on the finials and the hooks for a more consistent look. Then a coat of shellac over the air dry clay. My idea behind the spray paint was to spray the hooks and the finials before I use the Golden Rule Gilding Wax. I'm trying to replicate the brass finish on the base of these wreath hangers. I have got DIY Prairie Gray on this brush and I am loving this. This is my fall neutral obsession right now. This color looks great with dark wax, it looks great with white wax, and it stands alone beautifully. Now I've got a zebra brush here and I will link it down in my Amazon links below. I really love this one when I'm painting spindles. It hugs in through all of the curves just perfectly. I'm doing one nice base coat, not worrying too much about full coverage. I do let the first coat dry completely, and I go back in with a second coat because I am not distressing these wreath hangers. And here's a look at the prairie gray after one coat when it is dry. Like I said, I got that second coat on and now it's time to seal. I'm using DIY dark wax straight onto the paint. When I'm going for this almost dry brushed effect, I like to use little cheap chip brushes when I'm waxing. Place the wreath hanger on my Lazy Susan, if y'all don't have one, I highly recommend it. And I take my time moving up and down, kind of working on placing this wax randomly throughout the post. Next up is that gorgeous, brand new Golden Rule Gilding Wax. No longer on pre-order, it is available over on my site under the DIY Paint and Products collection. Now on this wreath hanger, I am giving it a good full coverage of the golden rule. On the second one, I'm going to go a lot lighter and y'all let me know down in the comments below which look is your favorite. Here's a peek at the finished wreath hanger on the left. Now this one on the right only has two coats of the prairie gray, no wax yet. You can see the gorgeous difference these waxes can create and what a uniform finished look it provides. Again, on this second spindle, I decided not to go quite so heavy with my waxes. I wanted y'all to be able to see the difference. I've got a very, very dry brush, barely any wax on it, and I am lightly going over, focusing more on the creases. And now it's time to mark some holes, make some pilot holes, and get the hooks attached. All right, before I show y'all the final project, we're going to put together a couple of wreaths real quick, which will also be available over in my Fall at the Cottage collection. And I am no professional wreath maker by any means, but I do love a beautiful floral arrangement, and these solo wood flowers definitely make that easy. They are made out of solo wood, which is very delicate, but very durable at the same time. So I'm placing them in this wreath with some hot glue. I will leave y'all my information down below if you want to check them out over on the Sola website and I will tell you which colors I am using in the description box below. All right, y'all watch closely, this is awesome. So I have some Dollar Tree greenery, which looks kind of plasticky and super bright. So now I'm taking DIY liquid patina, 
dark decrepit dust and plant lady making powder. I'm mixing that all together here to make this beautiful forest green glaze. Now I did add an extra drop of water just to make it a little easier to work with. Then I'm going to take a chip brush and brush this mixture all over the plastic greenery here. Let that dry and it gives it a much more high-end fall colored look. This liquid patina is magical. The making powder is magical. Put them together and it is going to be a ton of fun. The color possibilities are endless. Bright green on the left and the new color on the right. And the chip brush gave beautiful kind of almost striations there in the leaves. Now I'm just tucking it into this grapevine wreath, adding some solo wood flowers and we're done. and a peek at the final products. These are both available over on my site, upcycledbybree.com. The wreath holders are $26.95 each. Now, which one do you all like better? Do you prefer the heavier wax or the lighter wax? Leave me a comment below. Up next, Project 2, I found this brass base by the curb a few weeks ago when I was hitting up garage sales. Today I'm going to show you how to clean it. Usually I don't clean my brass, but this piece was a good candidate. So I've cut a lemon in half and I am dousing the entire piece with the juice. Next up, sprinkle some salt on top. I have pink Himalayan sea salt. It worked pretty well. Uh, regular old salt works a lot better though, just FYI. After it set for about 15 minutes, this is what you see. It almost looks like uh, rose gold. So now I'm doing just a little more lemon juice. I tried using this plastic brush and it didn't work. So I grabbed my steel wool and I apologize y'all. I apparently did not hit record with the steel wool, but it was uh, like quadruple zero steel wool. And when I'm done, look at this shine. It's beautiful. Okay, let's make a solid base inside this hollow candle stand I think maybe is what it used to be I'm putting some hot glue down inside the hole and using an old cork just to plug up the hole so my wood glue won't drip down using a small scrap wood round piece here I put tight bond glue on it I'm doing a little more hot glue to hold it in place while the tight bond glue dries and I will poke it right inside and it got hot and steamy be careful I should be using something else Goodness gracious, I let all of that dry for a couple of hours and now I'm drilling a pilot hole down into that solid piece of wood I have inside my stand. Perfect. So I am loving this little upcycle. You'll notice this piece of wood is imperfect. It was a seconds in one of my woods orders I placed recently, but it's going to make a beautiful plant stand. Little wood glue here on top. I just made my pilot hole and now I am putting my wood screw down into the base. Taking my time and this wood screw will counter sink nicely down into this soft wood. Now I am using a DIY beadboard and giving this wood top a nice solid coat. I also flip it over and paint the bottom. Probably could have done this before I put it all together, but you know, it's fine. It's working. Let that dry and then we will move on to some decoupage paper. I am so excited y'all about the brand new JRV papers. Wait till you see them. We're gonna pause real quick and look at these papers. This is Summer Flower Garden. You can find all the papers in the JRV Decoupage Paper Collection on upcycledbybree.com. Here are the cottage birds. 
This one is called Mermaids. Look at these mermaids, y'all. I cannot wait to use this one. Next up is the newsprint. This is my personal favorite. The vintage advertising has my heart. And these were designed by the Ray family, Jamie and Zeb Ray. He hand designed these. These are all custom made. This one is cottage floral. I almost used this one on the brass stand. It was a close second. Next up is the black and white floral. Last but not least is Bee and Barn. I love this one too. All these papers are 30 by 20, great for furniture because they're huge, or you can cut them up and use them on small projects. They're 18 pound paper, so they're thin but super durable. I have flipped the table over and I am using the brand new JRV Summer Flower Garden Paper. It is so much prettier in person. I literally gasped when I saw it. And I am just picking the section I want. I wanted some of the orange and a little bit of the pink. Cutting that out and we will get it put on top. Remember how I was telling you that this liquid patina is magical? Well, earlier I used it for a glaze on the floral. Now I'm going to use it as a decoupage medium. So you can use a regular top coat as well, but this liquid patina has a little more dry time. So you're able to work with the paper a little bit more. I've got a round sponge, which I will have in my Amazon links. And I use that to apply to the paint. Now I'm placing the paper right on top smoothing it out not worrying about wrinkles y'all because i like a little bit of that distressed finish it makes it look like a more antiqued piece so once i have it in place i give a little extra patina around the edges now i'll go back on top with more liquid patina I pour it out on top. I don't want to redip my sponge, you guys. I shouldn't have done it in the first place, but it was brand new. So I knew it wasn't going to contaminate it. But don't dip dirty brushes and sponges into your patina. Since it's an all-natural product, it can cause it to go bad. Once everything had dried for about an hour, I'm taking that 220 grit sandpaper and lightly sanding down around the edges to give it a distressed look. And then I go over the top for a antiqued feel. And here is a look at the final project. So what do y'all think? Leave me a comment below. Cottage core to the max with that brass, the orange, the maroon, now these little gold pumpkins, I painted this color on a live over on the DIY paint page. I will leave a link to that below so you can see how I mixed up those colors with the new making powder. How pretty, I love this. So this plant stand is $29.95. It is up on my site and everything you see with it staged here is available as well. That will all be in the Fall at the Cottage collection. I hope you guys got some great inspiration today, fall ideas. Again, keep these in mind for projects for yourself in the upcoming months. And if you're a maker, it's time to make. Now, don't forget, subscribe, hit that little notification bell to all, and please share this video with a friend who you think may like it as well. We're getting really close. When we hit 10,000 subscribers, I am doing a fun gifting video where I will be giving y'all either a set of candlesticks or a corbel. When it gets a little closer to time, I will do a vote over on my Facebook page. So make sure you are following me over there as well. Till next time, I will see y'all later. Bye friends. Not if you're fluffy, please lay it flat for two to three days and wait patiently for its recovery. We are sorry for the inconvenience. Ugh. <sighs> 
have not opened this yet. So wait, Elena, did you? Oh, you look real cute. Come here. Oh, come here. <laughs> We're pretty. Say hi, everyone. Oh, man. Oh, boy.